So apparently Amazon are making games now. I know, from humble beginnings, selling books online, to creating the world's biggest internet shopping site and making a bold man the richest human alive. But now they have seen the power of games. They have seen how EA makes shed loads of money by taking advantage of basement dwelling nerds and thought, hey, I should get me some of that. And now here they come, with a game that actually sparked my interest almost a year ago now when it was announced. This is New World. Let's start at the beginning. I fear it's crucial to know how this game may turn out by looking into who's releasing it. And that of course is by the newly sprouted Amazon Games. Their first release back in March this year was Crucible, a free to play team action shooter. Never heard of it? No, I don't blame you. <laughs> Nor had I until I made this video. It released a little fanfare and pretty much died within the month. Never a good start for a publishing company that has literally trillions in the back end. But wait. Am I pushing too far forward? Wasn't there that Grand Tour tie-in game back when the last season? <laughs> there was, wasn't there? Being able to play alongside the episodes as they came out on TV, trying all the new tracks and cars that were in that episode, and even getting some small clips of the show itself. And for a tie-in game, it was actually pretty nifty. <laughs> But let's be honest, Amazon don't want to make their name in game publishing and being remembered for only tying games. Another game on the horizon is Pac-Man Live Studio. <laughs> wow, we were a co-op Pac-Man game that has level editors where you can make them live on Twitch and share them. Come on, it's a cool idea, but is that really going to be your initial lineup to break into the world of game publishing? So I guess the last post, the game that they have to rely on to succeed at this point is New World. In a nutshell, New World is a massively multiplayer online post-medieval fantasy game set to release in August 2020, focusing more on the player progression more than anything else. Take to Eternum to colonize this fictional land that's sort of based on British America and also sort of has some overweight spiky tortoises fighting bushy deers according to the trailer. I know, it's the perfect game for all you radical colonists out there. First of all, the wildlife, oh my god, the wildlife looks insane taking some obvious real world creatures and putting a nice fantastical spin on them. The result is something else. And then you just have to look at the insane bosses that go all out there. I mean, look at the official trailer. Look, they're fighting zombie Romans and there's a big anorexic tree beard. How could this not be amazing? Wow, that trailer is spot on. It builds hype, but there's no gameplay, but I'm sure that's fine. I'm sure, I mean, like anything, the gameplay is gonna be exactly like the trailer. Uh, oh. It seems like New World has done what every MMO does. Makes an incredible cinematic trailer and then has gameplay that looks like D&D players doing hopscotch. Janky animations, textures glitching all over the place and much like me playing hopscotch at school, there's shit all over the place. The land of Eternum is encompassed in beauty from vast landscapes to deep oceans but around every corner is a new danger that must be faced in very different ways. Azoth runs below the surface of the terra firma, a mineral that gives its power and strength to all, the living and the dead. And you, as a player, will also be affected by this. In what way is up to you? It enhances all. The terrible become evil. The good become heroic. It embodies all beings differently. And that is for you to decide how it takes control. The corrupted rule the lands. People who have been in Eternum for centuries, even thousands of years, taken by the Azoth and turned into every man's nightmare. You can push them back, take settlements and start to create civilization in the land. Fight against the dark with your fellow explorers, set up camps, into forts, into towns and cities, become a blacksmith, a soldier, a farmer, or learn to control the magic itself. But as you push back the corrupted, they will start to come for you. Take your cities and land back, so you must gather your armies and be ready to fight against the forces of evil, or even good. Because not only will you be fighting against the natives, but you'll also be fighting against other players setting up clans and lands. The world will split into territories captured by the player and their groups. With this, of course, comes battles and sieges, defending and attacking enemy encampments, taking them for your own. But watch out, the corrupted will also be ever eager to take advantage of you at your weakest. Instead of sieges, where of course you have 50 versus 50 players going head to head, the invasion of the corrupted will come forth. They happen pretty frequently in waves and waves, hundreds upon hundreds of enemies that you must hold back and push with your siege weaponry, wits and skills. 
The progression isn't anything to shout home about, but of course it uses that tried and tested MMO mechanics. You gain XP, you get better. Whether you do this as an archer, your swordsman, black powder, or even magic, maybe a more passive approach is more your thing. Making the weapons, collecting the resources for the weapons, trading with foreign tribes and people, crafting homes, potions, jewels, making food for your clan to survive, or even becoming an engineer to build the tallest structures and the most deadly siege craft. It's really limitless in that sense, and I'm sure you're going to find something that tickles your fancy. <sighs> it all sounds pretty good, doesn't it? It sounds like the perfect game, but we've all had this so many times before. And some that come into mind, like Life is Feud or Glory of Victus, they look incredible and they have such a great concept, but they always turn out the same. They're always too grindy or not grindy enough. Too much content that you will never get through, or not enough content. There's always something too ambitious about it, and when the idea's there, the execution never really turns out to be the same. I've waded through hours and hours of gameplay and trailers, and it all seems to be your very typical RPG action MMO. There's nothing that really stands out as different. And hey, I goddamn hope I am wrong. I want this to be so good, but I fear it's just going to be another game on the pile of missed potential. Saying this though, I think the developers are really passionate about this project. This technically is the first true game on Steam that Amazon Games themselves have developed and published. So it does seem like a bit of a biggie to start with. I mean, start with as you mean to go on, I guess. If this is a success, it will propel Amazon Games into the AAA titles and actually have some credibility in the gaming industry. And I think they really need it right now. This is such an ambitious title that it could reach the highest heights or the lowest lows, and in such circumstances, it could break the Amazon gaming surge and give them a bad reputation going forward. The developers have postponed the game back to the 25th of August because of circumstances, which is great. I mean, it shows they're trying to get it right instead of rushing it out. And of course, it is an MMO, so we can expect bugs to the nth degree and maybe not as featureful as any more established MMOs, but hey, I guess only time will tell. But what do you think? Does this seem too good to be true? Or is it something you will be checking out on release? Maybe even you're going to wait for some time till reviews come through. Either way, I will be covering it and give my final verdict when we actually get our hands on the game. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. It helps more than you could ever know. And stay subscribed for the future of New World.